What do you do if you find that your track lost some of the spark during the arrangement process or during the general production stage? What do you do, right? So now that was somehow what, I, what happened during the process of creating this hands-on series, start to finish series. And now I want to be as honest and as transparent with you on this channel as I can be, right? And that's why I wanted to share some struggles and also some solutions to the challenges that I faced during this uh, hands-on series process, right? So I hope you still get some inspiration and value out of this series. And so, yeah, let's first start with the struggles and then I will move over to the screen recording and also share some solutions to the struggles, right? Okay, let's jump in. First, explain really quickly how I approach uh, production. Now, I try to follow a 70% rule that I made up for myself, which means as long as an idea or a track is 70% as good as my current skill set, so 70% of my current, <laughs> current skill set, um, I'm okay with it, right? Otherwise, I will never get out of the loop stage or uh, whatever and overthinking every little piece. And uh, that's why I aim for 70% and not for 100%, right? So this series was supposed to be a start to finish series where I thought I would just record uh, the production of a track, right? But to be honest, I faced some really problems, real problems that I wanted to share with, with you in this video and also some solutions on how I overcame, I overcame them, right? And hopefully this can uh, help you for your very own productions further down the road, right? Problem number one, using full drum loops can create some issues later in the arrangement process, right? So that happened to me because I was using some placeholder loops from a library from Silapexi and later on I didn't have enough control over the individual tracks, right? Which makes totally sense, right? Because um, I want to mute or unmute the, the clap, the hats or the kick and so on. And by using full drum loops, it was not possible, right? The solutions to this problem that I tried was first slicing the, the loop to a drum rack, but it didn't work really well. Second, as I said, EQing parts out uh, also didn't work for me. And then uh, the third solution for me that worked was just getting rid of it, right? So the key takeaway is I try not to use full-fledged drum loops from libraries so I have more control of all of the fund fundamental, fundamental parts like kick, clap and heads, right? Um, problem number two, by fixing those simple problems like the drum loop before, I found that I actually was over listening the other parts that I liked, right? So for example, the, the bass line, the texture stuff and things, right? And I was over listening them, right? And my solution to this is really simple and this, it was just letting go for, I don't know, two days. I, I was not listening at all to the track, right? And came back with some fresh ears and fresh mind. Problem number three, losing motivation and interest and fun because of over listening. So after fixing the problem with, uh, with the drums and, uh, and the bass, it's like a chain of challenges which occurred in over listening all the other stuff, right? So I was fixing the, the kick and the drum parts and um, I was over listening the parts that I liked. I didn't like them anymore, right? Which is <laughs> dumb, but so basically everything occurred because of this uh, full-fledged uh, drum loop, right? Because of the dr drum uh, placeholder, right? So the solution to this problem was how I approached it was I listened through the whole track and without the things that annoyed me, right? So the most like main group and bass line, right? So I muted them 
And then I asked myself, okay, which textures and which tracks do I still like? And then I simply kept them inside the track, right? So I was bringing in texture of the track texture and the ones that I didn't like, I just deleted, get rid of it. And then if I found that there was still something lacking, I just jammed out some new ideas. And um, yeah, it's still not 100% perfect, but it's for me, it's 70% of quality of my current skill set, I would say. And um, yeah, that's why I'm not overthinking it again and then move on. I already get some learnings out of it, so that's the whole point, I guess, right? And I had some fun later on again by jamming out new ideas. So I hope those little tips and learnings from myself helps you as well some, somehow or inspires you. I don't know. So yeah, now let's jump over to the screen recording and um, move further to the finishing line of this track. There's another video coming next week, I guess. And uh, yeah, if you want to download my free softbot snappy raw minimal kick Ableton Live kick template, you can do so for free as a little gift for watching this video. It's for free, so yeah, grab it if you like on the link. Thanks for watching. Now let's move over. Cheers. Thank you.